afternoon. Good afternoon. This is the Native Wellness um, Power Hour, and today um, I don't have this, the <laughs> the poster right in front of me, but I am going to talk about air, good air, good communication, and really um, the air that enables us to breathe. But I would like to welcome you to the Native Wellness Power Hour. Um, my name is Lori Newbrest, and I am coming to you from the traditional territory of the Blackfoot Confederacy on the Blackfeet Indian Reservation in Montana. And um, we haven't turned into popsicles yet, but uh, if you stay outside too long, that's what happens. So we're in the polar vortex, just like the other people. Although this is, you know, winter, right? It's uh, uh, how soon we forget. And although uh, winter is changing, our, um, how we know the seasons are changing, how they appear are different. Um, today I'd just like to greet all of you and that to acknowledge uh, the Noise Foundation for sponsorship of the Power Hour and to also remind you that Native Wellness has a YouTube page and um, if you go to their site nativewellness.com. Um, you can see some other products that they are now, you know, uh, in Indian country, the moccasin telegraph is one way we've always communicated prior to the internet, but also the internet has just been integrated into our moccasin telegraph. But you know, when you see somebody, when you see a native wearing a t-shirt, you know that it's not just that was the cleanest one in the house because sometimes it might not be. But uh, there's some other products online um, and you can kind of see what Native Wellness is about. Maybe you got here by, uh, you know, a recommendation of a friend. Maybe they, um, you know, sent you the link or whatever. But I just want to welcome everybody today out there in Cyberville. It's kind of like Whoville. No, I'm kidding. No Grinch is allowed. So in uh, my life, um, or the living life that I've lived this right now, I've worked uh, with many people um, from all different cultures, you know, all different skin shades, all different genders, all different ages. Um, all different occupations and it was on one thing when you take in a breath and you give words um i hope this is not those warranty people but they're the ones who bug me the most um good thing i have it on buzz and um when i would work on communication there's several things that I would talk about. And in wellness, when people uh, go on, they're looking at their journey, um, what's worked for them. And really that's what I wanna emphasize this hour because what works for you has far more impact than staying in the cycle of what doesn't work for you. And a lot of that is communication, communication with yourself, with others, your community. But also there is the communication that really is in every culture, in indigenous culture, where the individual, that person who has a, a connection to their nation, their tribe, their band, their society, their clan, their friendship circle. Um, maybe they're in a sobriety circle. Maybe they're in, um, we have um, on our um, reservation, one of the things we've discovered in the, about the pandemic is that there's a strong food circle of people getting food for other people. 
that they may not know, that they may never have a conversation prior to the pandemic, with, but that, that communication through their actions, through their body language, through their physical presence, through their hard work, they are demonstrating that the action of generosity and caring. And so they're like the food gatherer hoop during the pandemic for many communities. And there have been many instances where uh, tribes have helped other tribes during this time. And that is communicating a message that is far beyond the living generation into that uh, stratosphere or into that place that we all have teachings about the spiritual world where the ancestors live, but also where um, the teachers live, the spiritual teachers, whether they are human or not. And in that food behavior, food, your physical behavior is actually one of the main components of communicating to human to human. Because you can write a whole story without saying anything. And it starts with, no matter if your communication is to tell a joke, to ask a, um, you know, ask for a raise, you know, or um, I think it'd be real interesting if people shared because right we have up this um this day where um valentine's day is supposed to be right about right the cards are on sale those little gelatin candy hearts though which have better been updated <laughs> which is, i bought a box for my sister and some of those are like <laughs> like they're the, the language of now and so uh, as we are going on, um, usually when I get more than one buzz, I might be doing something. So I'm just going to check. You're going to see me check. Nope, not doing anything naughty on the Native Wellness Power Hour. So I shall continue. So when everybody, regardless of how you want to communicate, you must breathe. And that's what I want to, you know, emphasize uh, you know, how wellness, but also how healing is related to breath. A simple body action of, and I'm rehabbing this side of my latimus dorsi, but a simple body action of lifting your arm, not lifting your shoulder. And if you're seated or stand or standing and not just your head, your whole body, if you tilt just right now along with me and draw in a breath, don't hike your shoulders, don't hike this part. Use your tummy and extend your tummy and just take in a breath. When I was a part of a training program for Indigenous Theater in uh, Toronto, Ontario, Canada, when we were starting to sing, we did a lot of work that had to have better breath, to have that breath free up that had nothing to do with talking. It had merely to, to letting your body in different ways take in that breath. And um, one, of the, one of my teachers there, Sadie Buck from the Haudenosaunee Confederacy and Six Nations in Ontario. One of the things she said to me was, remember to dance, you must have singers. And then you must have the other heartbeat. But so there was a lot of discussion because we had people, uh, we even had, I was even in one training where one, um, I met an Indian that was trained professional to sing to sing in the opera. I mean, like how that was wild to me. I was like, Woohoo! that was the nineties last century. And, um, but when we would do that breath work, often it was about 
releasing, drawing in and releasing, sometime with intention. But the whole motivation was to learn to respirate so we could participate and sing. And at that time in Indian country, there were many people that had been told you can't sing. They had been told that uh, historical trauma uh, slogan that has come down, you know, from the 1880s in this country, in the US, where we were prohibited from singing. It was outlawed. And then you could be sent away. And then later on, when it becomes a tradition to quiet our singing voices, that is, it's come down still to these gen to the generation now. And there are many people, regardless of their gender, that are finding healing and singing again to get the whole circle singing again. And breath is part of that. And it doesn't mean you have to, you know, know the top 10 uh, social distance powwow songs that you've learned during the pandemic, but that would be really cool. You know, if you just share that on your page, <laughs> you know, feel free. And um, for those of you that have been in workshops with me, I uh, periodically scare people because I just start singing a song like a Broadway tune, you know, about maybe, uh, you know, it might be time. It might be time to give up those pandemic pajamas. And, um, and I've actually seen people startle because we also carry that message from the times past that if you sing, that's a no-no for Indians. But that's recent. We have from eternity songs. And when I was talking with um, my dad a long time ago, it's Daisy's birthday, it would have been his 84th birthday, but he passed in 2002 from lung cancer. Um, but we were talking about that and he had recorded some tapes um, um, for us. And, um, but when I was talking to him, he was saying that he grew up not even thinking about that because they sang at home. He didn't, he didn't have that, but he went to boarding school. But he, when he was talking to me about songs, he was saying, you know, like the, you want to say, he called them the straight songs or the old songs. Those were given, divinely given, or given through dreams, or given through, uh, you know, historic events for our people, um, to honor people, to announce intention, to keep our way of life going. But ultimately, they have a divine origin, or the creator's origin. Just like our breath is given by the creator. Our lives are enabled to be on this planet and in this living generation because we receive the sacred breath. And there's things that people mark in every family, in every person's life. And some people will remember them, but I guarantee you it happened. That after you were born, there came a point when you were an infant that you laughed. And many people have uh, traditions to honor that, that first laughter of when a child begins to announce, you wanna say through that, through that laughter song, they announce their connection to the living generation. They're in, a, they're in a transition after birth. And there are many people that um, I had the honor with my dad that we uh, drove up, he, he was uh, very ill um, at the end, or frail, but he was strong because he came from that generation that they were like, um, 
you know, their sinew was tough. And um, they, but he wanted to go up into the mountains so he could give to the, the creator and the ancestors the announcement of basically that he was coming. And then he um, wanted, he would sing little snatches of songs um, as his breath was, as he was able. And he also sang, you know, English songs. And so for him, what I learned in those moments on my own wellness journey was he was there and, and at, you know, getting ready for his transition. And he was mindful of it. He knew it was coming. And we would sit there. And then every once in a while, he would sing a little snatch of a song. And I have thought of those moments um, many times. And I many times, I mean, I haven't, uh, for a couple decades, I didn't share them. But I thought about that today, that his body was in pain. His physical body was getting ready for its transition. But what kept him in that moment to bring joy and happiness and remembrance of things he had lived through was a song. And breath is so important to that. I can remember um, that uh, there was an exercise that maybe, you know, in the future people will get to participate in, but you can reenact it, I'll describe it. I was, um, uh, this exercise where you throw, you throw sound to people. It's not even a song, it's just sound. And you create a distance till they hear your voice. And one of the instructors, she had uh, um, one of my brothers stand behind me that I was in training with. And she said, if you feel like you're going to fall back, he'll catch you. And I was like, why would I fall back? <laughs> you know, like I was all into the competition. So by giving sound, which everyone knows how to make a sound, right? Oh, or, you know, like, hey, if, you know, if there is an Indian on the planet that don't know how to give an A, I don't know. Someone got to teach you. So you, that's a sound, right? But there, it could also be, you know, if you know animal sounds, wind sounds, it's just a sound. It's something that announces to the world that you have breath. And so practicing that big sound, I did fall back and my brother did catch me, but I kept giving my sound. And I had thought a lot about that in preparing for today because I have the privilege of, um, you know, in, uh, as an instructor at the tribal college and workshops with groups I've worked with on how you pass a policy or, uh, you know, how you, you prep for something to really help free that voice. And that's in breath, we are given that capability, how we're, how we're made together or put together. And breath is increasing incredibly important. There are things that we are learning about during the pandemic about how for, well, I think you didn't know this, but how forceful the breath can change somebody's condition you're talking with. How forceful the breath, once you say something, it can be transferred by that person that receives it to another person. So much like when our way of life is, you know, or things that, that we were gifted are taken away and they start to be changed 
through uh, the, the historical process. You start to think like you're Indian thinking, you know, because we live in two, I don't know, five, six, seven worlds. I don't know how many, but, you know, depends on what Indian you are. And they start to not get like this, but they start to circle around each other. And I've thought of that a lot during the pandemic, you know, why you wear a mask and they'll show the force of air. And for many decades now in wellness, people have talked about the impact of like bad words and how, you know, saying good words out loud, how you're rebalancing not only what may you might think about yourself or feel about yourself, but also the world you live in, you know, to use diplomatic language to really be mindful of what you speak of. And as people, including my, you know, my people, the land, the honoring of our, our real language that was given to us, you see those attempts, you see people wanting to know their, how to say their Indian name, wanting to know the names of, of our home. And, and that is transferred through the breath. So we have like our native language, we have that English language, we speak Italian, French, Polish, Russian. I met a lot of, of native people in Canada that spoke Russian and or you know their people were from ukraine or somewhere so you have all of these languages but it's like with the same intention and i think during the pandemic that's one thing that we've all been conscious of how we breathe and when we share air with somebody else how we have to care care about the air we share now there's a t-shirt right there. So when you're caring about that air you're sharing, the eyes is coming to some type of balance because that discussion is in everything now about how to stop the transmission, not to share your air to care enough about somebody else that you take those precautions. And I had good news this morning that, um, and we call them our sister communities in the Confederacy up in Canada, that the <clears throat> some of the elders are getting vaccinated today. And although that is happening, we must call on our cultural strengths to continue to care about the air we share. Because until, you know, everybody on the planet, I was like, does the world start to think like an Indian? Because what is the honor of, of one of us is the honor of all to breathe safe air. And up in Williams Lake, BC, when, when their community was going, was in their first sobriety movement, they came up with that slogan. The honor of one is the honor of all. And if I just think about that in terms of the good air that we want to give somebody in the pandemic, we want to give them that good air, that safety, that that means everybody. And so there's, there's a collective uh, moment that we've been in now. And so when I hear about that, you know, that people are caring about not only their breath, but the breath of another and whole communities, whether it's a state, whether it's a tribe, whether it's a society or a circle or a tribal council, people are starting to again, embrace that care for the other. And, and really it's like, uh, it's an ownership too. 
So there is that type of air, like, right, that we're living in. It's in the moment. That's why we wear masks, you know, and those good masks, you know. And uh, when I see people resisting that mask wearing or, you know, even I was like, geez, didn't they spend a lot of money on those posters from the, in the U.S. government? You see somebody and this is how they're wearing their mask. I mean, in their elected leadership, come on, you know? It's like driving fast on a Montana highway with no license. Don't do that either. So there's that type of air during the pandemic. You know, we're all constantly talking about air. Keep the air healthy in your home. You know, boil medicines with this on the stove so you breathe in. And many times um, when I was... Uh, prior to the pandemic, but now, and I did that right before I came on the power hour, I was gifted a little bag of medicine, <clears throat> of traditional medicine, earth medicine. And so I put it up to my nose and I inhaled it. So that when I come on here today with you all, even though you can't smell me, although I did shower, I am setting, I am changing my breath. I am inhaling the creator's breath that made that medicine from all the gifts that we've received from the plant world, the soil, the air, the water. I'm inhaling that breath from the natural world. And it is changing what comes out of me. So during this time, there has been that dialogue about keeping our in, indoors protected from the pandemic, but there's also been a lot of healing shared uh, through personal stories, through phone calls, texts, um, and I've seen like the spread of knowledge, the trust in our ancestors' teachings about what can get us through this. And I've really been encouraged by that. But I've also, you know, it's caused me to think a lot about as we change and our communities change and we start traveling out of it, we take our another, let out our sigh, you know, after, for, um, for my people. The day I seen after our outbreak last fall here of COVID-19 and the loss of many of our people on both sides of the border, when I seen that we had no new cases, it was at zero. I hadn't realized how much I was holding my breath every time I went on that website. But I let out a sigh of relief and then I took another breath back in because we must not put aside those good ways of caring for other people. And I think a lot about um, that the wellness, if I want to say the wellness moments that I had in my own life, but also I witnessed. I witnessed people caring about the generations they will never see because they change things now. Their hope that um, that a child that comes into a foster care or in temporary care, that that child's breath is protected by being in a smoke-free home, a commercial tobacco smoke-free home. And I've seen that many, many times over. And in this cold weather, there is communities accommodate their members that are still, that's, that's their life way right now. And the opportunities that have been taken by some tribes as they open up for businesses and jobs, it's like, you know, there was such a flowering and economic boom in Indian country around uh, Indian gaming. And it will continue because it's like those words of calling back prosperity for communities, calling back 
skill building for our people, calling out, come home for our wellness and well-being, come home for the education. We're educating our children at home now. Those call outs will continue. And so many tribes have made the decision to, when they open up their casinos, that they will be smoke-free, commercial tobacco smoke-free. And then, you know, some of you got that extra little job that you might have where they, you know, uh, cannabis smoke-free and e-cigarette, no vaping in the casino. Because So there's a lot of things we can do to keep good air in the homes we live in, in our cars, in the venue, the places we go when we're, we're gathering, those opportunities to, in the future, you know, to end, to enter in the big powwow, in the big room that's carpeted. Oftentimes I think about that. I love, you know, I love to see people dance anywhere, but I, I also think about um, my grandparents that didn't live to see that, or I think about the stories that I was told when I, you know, from my mom about how when certain people would come to visit and they'd start singing, uh, or just singing, how they would dance around the wood stove. And then now there's a whole generation that is introduced to the dancing circle and they dance in, their dance is on a carpet in a big venue. So those days will return. And so there's that, right? You take care of your home, you take care of yourself as an individual, you take care of your community for good air that people are breathing in, you know, can receive. And then when you think about breath and air, when you are going to speak. Speaking is just one way you transfer air. And your good words that come out. There is in every um, culture, there's teachings about maybe you were modeled how to speak good words or compliments or talk about difficult subjects or to set boundaries. And there are ways to help, help with that. You can prepare, you can do a lot of different things, write down notes, scripts even. But one of the simplest ways that you can help yourself say those good things to other people, about other people, about your community. Maybe you're going to be called on to give a speech at somewhere, even online. And you want to have those good words come out. You want to have that confidence come out, that love for whatever you're talking about. You simply just take a drink of water or water. You take water in and there are all there are plants in the medicine world that help with that too to speak the truth to uh, talk about something difficult and also there's there's a balancing with all things that you ask that of if you ask water to help you speak if you ask water to help you listen because sometimes Speaking comes after you listen and hear. You really hear and understand what that person is saying or what, what you are hearing from groups of people or maybe from nature or, you know, if you are trying to learn a song. Whatever you ask that water for to carry forth good words, that's the way it's going to be received into its body, to your body. But there are a lot of medicines too that that um, they help with hearing. 
because maybe, you know, you come from an occupation or maybe a life experience where you know you should pause and take a good breath and listen. But maybe that wasn't always available to you, that pause. And you learn to talk rapidly all the time or to think about what you were going to say if you were listening. Not about just understanding. And so it's important when you are deciding to talk about something that you also, if it's like here, right? Um, early on, I would try to read comments and stuff, but that uh, with one, I'm a one woman, Indian woman show um, right here. Well, I've got three sleeping wrist arms, but uh, it isn't always possible to put aside what you learned before and pause. So it takes practice. And I'm speaking out, but if I was dialoguing with somebody and a lot of the wellness uh, work in Indian country, regardless of, of where you do it, um, it involves those exercises of how in communication you learn to listen, to report back what you, what you heard, which is feedback. And then you speak and then you listen and you get feedback. It's to learn again, if you want to say the power of breath to give you through language you have a relationship with the person you're speaking with. And it could be any type of relationship. It could be, um, you know, going to a store. And, uh, you know, for in my community, those are, are part of our frontline workers. The people that keep the tribal grocery store running, all the merchants in town. And um, we recently, you know, you're able to, through an app, order from the casino, but someone brings your food out. So it's like you have interactions with people and to prepare. So if you aren't used to, or you were not brought up, or maybe, you know, you're having a scratchy day during the pandemic to say, thank you. I appreciate what you're doing. I appreciate you being here today. You know, I um, have a friend and she was adamant when her kids were small that they said thank you. And so now knowing them, they're, they're getting to young adults. They say thank you. you they get something at the store, thank you. They, uh, somebody shares something with them, thank you. It's become a normal way and different communities have a different language for that action. And we've had a discussion in, the, in our Confederacy about, you know, how, what that phrase, like we didn't have to know that phrase or that action because Kindness was practice. Generosity was practice. And so if we develop a word, it's going to be a new word around that action. But the power to use your breath to have good words come out, it's about that collective like desire so that to move forward collectively in a good way. And that's the time of wellness we're living in, where you see the gathering of people for the intention to help each other, to support each other, so that they can go forward living a good life, a good long life. And so in communication, there's also about maybe talking to somebody and about something difficult and you know no pressure but 
uh, I, when I taught the communication class and we would also, or when I talk about it in trainings or even, you know, you, you look on the internet right now and they would say, do we date? And people would, would they'd look around at each other like, do we need to date? You know, so let's say you wanted, you had somebody you were interested in, and you didn't want them to be your brother or sister or auntie or uncle or grandmother or aunt or second cousin or whatever, you know, that you were interested in them, getting to know them, and you wanted to talk to them. I heard this, um, this documentary that's going to come out about a day in the life on earth and they interviewed uh, this young man he, i think he was in pakistan and right now they cannot go in fraternize or india they can't go and fraternize so for the young people his age to find a interest a, a person of interest not like in a csi crazy way but in a romantic way um, all he could do is he seen this girl go hang laundry on the rooftop and he was hoping he would be out there, he would wave to her and stuff and, and she had kept ignoring him or not acknowledging him, but he was hopeful. So every day he was going back up and trying the most basic thing to start a relationship is hello. And even, you know, in the technology age, uh, you know, relationships might be the nanosecond, you know, swipe, swipe left or right, you know, kind of, but there will be a time when you can talk to or FaceTime even now through technology somebody you're interested in. But um, on the internet, just like at a, at a traditional people to people gathering before this, you might wanna check out that person first because you must use caution in this medium. But the way, the basic way to form a relationship of somebody that's not your relative and not in that category is a greeting. So if you have never said to somebody, hi, my name is, what is your name? Or, you know, in Indian country, sometimes it gets down, where are you from? <laughs> <You know? laughs> but so there's those types of conversations. You practice, you know, simple simple things. And I used to tell, um, you know, we used to make jokes about forming relationships, you know, and honor. This is my one Valentine tip. If you have a little thing, you've gotten the courage up, or maybe you've been texting with somebody or whatever, you've been communicating with them for this coming day, this calendar day that is made up. Um, you don't start with asking about their credit report and how much money they have in their bank account. You ease into that. You use your breath to find out their name, where they're from, what are they doing, what did you do today that you enjoy? What are you looking forward to? You start out with questions that are not, you know, deep diving about their life. So sometimes communication, um, involves preparation and but also breathing because if you take a breath between saying your name right now so if i say lori and new breast it sounds really different and the intention is different than if I said, Lori and breast. And breathing helps control conversations. Not that 
not the kind of on wellness control, but really to make sure that each person is heard and that they are listened to, acknowledged, and that there is a shared experience so that the air that comes out in speaking is good air, is to make that connection better, to make that connection start to initiate it in a good way. And so I was thinking, you know, all, because there's a lot of stuff uh, about breath. In terms of healing and being able to, maybe there's uh, some group that you belong to or even um, using this medium if you're employed or if you're going to take a training and you have a reluctance to speak on the internet or to speak maybe in a Zoom chat or in a Zoom group or, you know, any of the other platforms. How do you speak? when maybe that is not your comfort level. That hasn't changed. Um, in the 90s, uh, I had this one class um, of people and it was just like, it was just these vibrant, everybody had a, a, a reason for being there and they're excited to be there. They're excited to learn. And, um, but the age range was from 16 because that person had been pushed out of the regular academic high school. 16 years old to 62. And so we played a lot of games to understand and a lot of laughter to laugh out those tensions about being seen. So if you engage on the internet, on the social media, every, every uh, mechanism or every piece of technology you have, have you have the ability to practice with it, to practice with yourself on camera, to look at yourself. And one of the things I did before I turned, because I had just eaten lunch and um, I was getting ready for this. So one of the things I did when I turned on my camera, I made sure that there was nothing in my teeth and that because of the cold air, uh, for those of you that live in the warm climates, this I'm just gonna tell you, let you in on a little secret here for cold air people. If you go outside and like earlier today, it was negative 40, go outside, your nose hair heals and then uh, uh, freezes. And then when you come in, your nose might run. So I didn't want that to happen on camera. So I checked out, right? So if you have been the silent participant or the silent person, but you have something to contribute and this medium is new to you or may be a little bit difficult, you have the opportunity to practice. And if you use this medium that maybe in the future, do you want to contribute to a group and offer in whatever your gift is, your, in, your intelligence, and you want to offer it? You can practice. And in practice, it's the breath that will help you. It's taking in that breath and then speaking. It's taking in that breath and practicing. And if you find you hit a hitch, or maybe like today, I'm uh, maybe somebody, maybe I got a text, you know, right before this, please share the meaning of life on your power hour. And I might have went, <gasps> and you're practicing an important thing or getting comfortable on this medium and you want to share, you can practice off, off camera, using the little device, using your camera and your computer or your phone and understanding that if you come to that moment that you can breathe past it and continue on. And early on, um, one of the things that I have worked through many indigenous communities with is being seen and speaking. And when people had a hesitancy for that, 
they could get over it. I've seen many champions of public speaking go forth. And I think uh, some of my delight now is being their witness to see people that um, I knew when they were teenagers take leadership in my own community, but in the communities that I've worked in. And just to see all the interaction and the vibrancy of young people all over. Starting, you know, that favorite frame, um, phrase, time to step up. So I am proud to be people's witnesses to their letting free their voice. And in that freedom of breathing, drawing a breath of the living generation, our words matter, our songs matter, our voices matter. Even when, if we go, um, there was one community, like I, I learned like one of their secret codes where, you know, they, they give a little kind of whistle through the teeth at, at other members. So even in a big, and the story I heard was one of them was at Denver March Pow Wow. And they were walking, they're strutting in their outfit. You know, they made it to Denver March and they're strutting in their outfit. And they heard someone from their community did that particular whistle through their teeth. Out of all the vibrant activity at Denver March Pow Wow, they said they whipped around and they knew it was somebody from home. So the power of breath through speech, through song, through, through sound can incredibly unite people. It can connect you wherever you are. And I think at this time in wellness, you know, there has been the leap. How do we not leave people out there in the communities hanging um, and how do we support them? And that's really the intention of the power hour. Even the word, right? Um, power hour or the title power hour is to say that if we are breathing or these are my words, not native wellness. If we are breathing, we have the ability to change the air we breathe, so it's good air. So it's good for our people, it's good for the planet, it's good for the animals, and we have the power to honor the air of the ancestors through listening for those songs that are on the wind. Or maybe you're, you know, one of my uncles uh, has, a lot, he had a lot of stories about and if you spend out any time like out in the bush or out on the, um, the land in, in, in winter or during, you know, any time of year, but in winter, there's certain sounds that you learn to make. Um, when the ice freezes over, it talks. Mm. 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 And that sound is because you heard, because you were drawing breath to be out on the land. You heard the stirring of air under the ice. You heard the water talking in winter. And so there's many opportunities for us to think about that, like our good breath, breathing in, breathing out, through words, how we take care of our community, how we take care of each other. I, uh, you know, I like little slogans and little catchphrases. And so this is one I was using with people about the coming day, you know, Valentine's Day. And, but really now for looking ahead, during winter is a time to share those stories in many cultures that are specific to carrying you forward to the summer, to the spring, to the summer, to the next fall, to the next winter, to the next years. And 
there's an intention behind learning to take a good breath and honoring that because that is the dream that I feel, I believe, and that I've experienced. That's the ancestor's dream for us. That we live in a world where our breath that we take in is good air and we are free to live out those songs, those storytellings, to listen to the earth and be able to honor their sound through our voice, through good air. And so on this uh, wellness journey that we all are on, uh, my wish for you is that all for you and all your relatives, all your friends that you love, that they have good air today. And it's also my wish for all those people you are yet to love in your life, that they have good air. And that for all the generations after us, that we have good air. And for all our relatives and the, uh, and the animals, the birds, the natural world, the trees, the ice, the water, that there is good air, good air for all our relatives and creation to breathe on this day and in the future. And really in wellness, it is about finding that breath so you can share and play your part that only you can do in the circle of, of healing that's going on in many communities, but also in this living generation that we're all gifted with that. So I'd like to close with this definition. I, I talked earlier about Sadie Buck from the Haudenosaunee Confederacy. And she told me that we were talking about singing and what makes a good singer. Or somebody asked what makes a good singer. And she said, your willingness. A good singer is somebody who sings. So, if you are comfortable of making up a song, whether it's about your makeup sponge or it's about uh, medicine tea or it's about the here and now, what you're doing, what you're going to make tonight for dinner, it's about anything. That's my wish for you, that through good air and good breath, you find a song. And so I would just, again, like to thank you for joining the Native Wellness Power Hour today. And um, at the beginning, I'd like to end like I did. I mean, at the beginning, I'd like to use that in the ending. There's also the Native Wellness YouTube page. And um, I do read comments after, but somebody always will answer those. So have a great day, and I wish you good air today. Bye-bye.